I used to think that a Camaro or a Mustang without a V8 is a waste of time. Well, it's certainly true for Mustangs, but not so much for Camaros. I keep forgetting that there are many sports cars out there with V6 or inline 6 engines that in some ways can outperform the V8s. The only subjective deficiency of the V6 Camaro is the existence of the V8-powered Camaro SS, because this is the car everyone talks about when referring to muscle cars. Today, I'm going to tell you why the V6 trim deserves to be in its own league and should never be considered inferior. Welcome everyone to uh, Chevy Camaro. I mentioned the Camaro in my previous videos and mainly because I drove a Camaro SS, I drove a Camaro LT1, I drove a Camaro V6 with a manual transmission and now I am in a very very base Camaro with a V6. So this video is more of a summary on what I've learned about Camaros and uh, what I think about them. We're gonna start with the exterior. Honestly I do like the exterior but from the practicality standpoint or when it comes to daily drive you start noticing its uh, efficiencies uh, and mainly of course the visibility. That's something that didn't go away and that's the main complaint people have with uh, Camaros. If you can go past that, it's a nice looking car. In my case, so I'm six foot two, my seat is all the way down to the floor. I mean, it's nice when you're out on the road, it feels pretty good. You feel like you're in a cocoon. The problems start when you want to park your car or you want to exit a Corner. This is when it becomes difficult because as you can see this door panel here is very high so what I'm doing uh, when I'm parking is just lowering the window down uh, sticking up the head and try to see where am I parking so I'm not hitting something you know which is a problem I had the car for maybe three or four days at this point and I still don't feel confident in parking the car the other issue is the uh, blind spots because of this back area you don't really see anything and that refers to the passenger side as well because I've tried to lower the seat as much as I can and I still had that blind spot the rear window is kind of almost useless I started to heavily rely on the backup camera which is pretty good actually it's pretty wide it's a very high resolution so it does a good job in this from this perspective overall the car looks great I like how it looks it looks sharp it looks it looks good when it comes to visibility it's still the main complaint uh, for Camaros the interior space is actually good I, I don't feel myself cramped or anything like that and that's partly because this is an automatic transmission. What I found to be really disturbing is the manual transmission Camaro because for some reason where you have your normal uh, third pedal, the clutch pedal, uh, there's some wires and I don't know about you but my foot is, I think I'm wearing 12, 12 and a half and when I had that V6 Camaro with a manual transmission I was constantly rubbing my foot against that those wires that are right above the clutch pedal which is annoying meanwhile on the uh, right side where's your uh, brake pedal and the gas pedal nothing of that is happening you have a lot of space you can move your foot however you want the overall design of the interior it's it's okay it's a little bit more simple compared to Mustangs and here everything is modernized from the design standpoint of course the steering wheel Actually, this is one of the things I really liked about this uh, base, again, Camaro. Sorry, I'm thinking about Mustang. Uh, and that is that it's leather wrap or, I mean, something very close to leather because it looks, it looks pretty good. It feels very good. And this is something I really appreciate. First and foremost, the steering wheel is something you're going to be touching every day uh, and it has to be nice uh, for the touch, you know. The infotainment system, for some reason, 
I always have problems with the GM's infotainment system. My phone doesn't always connect to it, and I'm talking about Bluetooth uh, connection. There's some delay in connections, and it's the same thing for Camaro. I had a Chevy Malibu, which is the worst car I ever drove. I had a Cadillac XDS, so all these three times I had issues with connecting my phone. My Android Auto was not working properly either, so I'm sorry. I it doesn't work for me. The seats are pretty comfortable. The rest of it, it's fine. You can tell that this car has already 20,000, almost 21,000 miles on it. And the interior doesn't really look like it was heavily abused. And uh, I believe that many people have been in this car and you can kind of tell usually because it's a rental car after all. But in this case, it looks like everything holds up pretty well, which is very important. Speaking about the uh, V6 engine, uh, I was pretty surprised with the amount of power this engine makes. Yeah, I've changed the setting a little bit for the video, so I should be a lot more visible than I was before. So I initially thought that this is a four-cylinder turbo engine, and in fact it's a V6. And it's a pretty good V6 because uh, aside from being pretty powerful, surprisingly for me it has the cylinder deactivation function which means that on a highway you can see if you uh, scroll down the menu on your gauge cluster uh, you can see the graphic changing from V6 to V4 supposedly it deactivates two cylinders on a highway where you keep your uh, speed pretty uh, stable this way you're saving up some gas so I don't know how much in fact it helps with saving the gas because I do drive like a jerk. Not very often, but I do. In a car like this, you are getting, uh, you can get around 30, 30 something miles per gallon on a, on a highway, which is nice. And I think I got uh, 26, 27 miles per gallon combined. So this is a really good result in my opinion. Oh, and also uh, the engine, it revs pretty high. I would say, I mean, 7,000 RPMs. Uh, it's it's pretty decent. So I gotta say a few words about transmission. What I'm having here is a 10 speed automatic transmission, which is decent, to be honest. Uh, it feels better than the one in the Mustang. Well, it upshifts pretty good. I mean, it's not uh, on par with ZF transmission, but it does a good job. Uh, the problem is that it doesn't downshift all that well. And uh, that can be an issue. So I do account for uh, the delay in uh, downshifts. I decided to downshift, uh, well, because it's a 10 speed, uh, two, three gears, maybe even four, uh, before I enter a corner. But I would do that earlier than I would do normally in any other car. And when you do that, you approach the corner with the right speed and the right gear, uh, which Kind of, kind of makes it work. Oh, lost some traction. I would say I like this transmission more than the one in the Mustang, either GT or EcoBoost. I think they're they're still using the same 10-speed automatic transmission. The one that is uh, made by GM, it feels better. It upshifts quicker, in my opinion. I feel like you can live with it a little bit easier than with the one in the Mustang. There's less gear hunting here, uh, which is really nice. If I think of the manual transmission, I only drove the v V6 variant with the manual transmission, and honestly, I didn't drove it for all that much, so I didn't really liked it. Although, what I remember it was is that it was pretty snug, so uh, you had to get used to it, and, but it felt very solid. You know, and this is a really important thing when it comes to Camaros because if it's it's either V6 or the V8 Camaro, they all come with uh, reliable uh, and good feeling Tremec transmissions compared to Mustangs, which ride on the famous for its problems uh, transmission, the MT82, and uh, I mean you have to step up to 
uh, Shelby GT350 to get a Tramac transmission or a better feeling transmission overall. So that's a great point for uh, for Camaros. Since we're talking about transmission, I have to say a few words uh, about the driving modes. I do remember that the Camaro SS with the V8 had I think four uh, or five modes. There weren't too many. Uh, this base V6 has only three modes. Touring, the Sport, which just keeps the RPMs a little bit higher. Although the problem with that is that it keeps the RPMs high as long as you keep your foot off the throttle. The second you return your foot onto the gas the transmission will shift to the next gear so it's not a big difference between uh between transmission modes it's kind of it's kind of works works the same i wish it was better tuned it's still better overall for uh this specific application so speaking about driving modes with the different driving mode you also get a different steering mode as well so the touring mode has a lighter steering the sport mode has a heavier steering uh, and I forgot to mention the third mode is snow ice which well I'm in Florida so I cannot really test it but uh, with those two modes the touring and the sport one yes the steering gets heavier but it still feels a lot more natural compared to Mustang which felt a little bit too heavy and not connected to the wheels I would put it this way maybe here because it's a V6 it's not a V8 so the front end is lighter so it's a lot more there's a lot more communication between during input and the actual car's behavior uh, but still handling and stability this is where Camaro is just the best even in this base very base trim like this one even with those tires that come standard on the on this V6 model, there's so much grip. And every time I would enter a corner on purpose, faster maybe than I should, I would always have grip. Or even if I would lose some traction, I wouldn't really understeer. It would even go oversteer a little bit, so the, the, the tail would come out a little bit. Funny enough, speaking about the uh, driving modes, I felt like when you do not uh, turn off your traction control, the car tends to slide a little bit better than with the traction control off. I don't know, that might be because when the traction control is on, it may allow for more sliding. Meanwhile, when you have your traction control off, you have only the uh, differential, limited slip differential working for you. So the limited slip differential might block that sliding or slippage of uh, wheels when you uh, try to do stupid things. This might be the case, I'm not sure, but yeah, the car feels, the car feels very planted. I had grip most of the time, which is which is very surprising and the car feels very flat. There's so many packages you can get with the with the Camaro that even if you go with a uh, V6 or even a four cylinder, you can get some wide, nice wheels on the car uh, with good tires. You can get good seats, a handling package overall. So you're gonna get a lot more from a driver's perspective from uh, a Camaro compared to a Mustang. You will have to modify a lot more your Mustang to handle as good as a Camaro. This is my opinion. I mean, this is really something to consider. If I would be out in the mountains in both stock cars, I would definitely go with a Camaro because it definitely handles a lot better. It's way more balanced. I like how the rear end comes along when you when you enter the corner. It, it's it's way better. It's generally better than a Mustang. The Mustang is more of a cruiser and as it was mentioned by someone else, it's a way for people who want to buy a convertible or just an overall coupe, you know, to just go and buy a car and which is not going to beat on you and uh, it's going to be overall comfortable with some power you know and this is what is a Mustang until you start to modify it and or uh, upgrade for higher packages uh, when it comes to handling. I feel like if it wasn't for the visibility, I would probably consider buying in the future a Camaro instead of instead of Mustang, which I'm hoping to get one day. But it's kind of cramped in here. Even though I said that it's it, there's a lot of space, it, it's a little bit hard to live with it. Now, it may look like I've been complaining most of the video casting a negative shadow over the car. The truth though is that I really like the V6 Camaro. 
And most of the stuff I've complained about are the little trade-offs you will be dealing with when getting into a Camaro anyway. And honestly, I can forgive most of those imperfections in return for the performance and value you will be getting with it. And yes, I'm saying value because in order to bring an EcoBoost Mustang to the 1LE package of the Camaro, you'll need to spend 5 to 6 grand more and that will include the optional Magna Ride dampers which are a must if you want to take it serious. I will soon post a video about my experience driving a Camaro assess in Virginia mountains, thus showing you the true capabilities of this platform, so stay tuned. That's about it, thank you all for watching, I'll see you next time and now I gotta run to the beach because I've been in Florida for a few days and I haven't been to the beach yet, which is unacceptable. See you next time!